Welcome everyone to the weekly Tuesday measure webinar. Uh, we'll, we'll just wait a moment before we start while we let everybody join in. Um, but just to, just to summarize again today, we are going to be going over um, the different kinds of PDF output you can get out of measure. Uh, that's gonna be uh, from the print menu, that, which most of you are already familiar with, but then also we'll go a little bit into the forms menu, which a lot of you may not uh, have seen before. So basically that just gives you a different way of expressing the information, uh, a, li a little bit more advanced than the regular print menu. As I said, we'll just wait about a minute or so and just to, just to let everyone join in. All right, we have some new people joining in, so just uh, for the benefit of those who have just joined in, uh, we're waiting just a minute or so to let everybody else join in, um, but today we're going over the PDF output from Measure, uh, both from the print menu and from the form section. Okay, I think uh, I think that's... I think that's probably long enough to wait there, so let's get right into it. Okay, so what we have in front of us here is a, a sample project. We've got a, a range of different products and things in here. Uh, so of course, when you come to uh, the end of any measure project, it's time to, time to print it out. And there's a number of different reasons you're doing that. You're either giving the client something, uh, maybe, the, maybe the supplier something, or perhaps you're giving something to your layers or installers for them to refer to. Uh, so what most of us have always been doing is coming up to file and then moving down to the print section. All right, so we'll refresh that. And there's a number of different things that you can do in here. Uh, basically, you have a, a whole bunch, bunch of different pages that you can turn on and off over here on the site. Uh, just to go through the, the common ones that most people have turned on, um, room plan and seam plan, sometimes just maybe the seam plan. I'll go over the, the difference between those two in a moment. The cut plan, definitely, especially if you're passing something off to the layers, uh, and sometimes the worksheet as well. Now, if the project is coming from Measure Mobile, uh, you may have things like photos, notes, and checklists. So if you'd like to print those off, then I'd also like to point out that you do have a checklist page you can turn on. Uh, also, the note view and the explorer section and the photos would probably be useful there as well. Now, going back up to the difference between room plan and seam plan, basically, um, what we're looking at here is the room plan. And then if I move down a little bit further, what we're looking at here is, uh, is the seam plan. So the fundamental difference here is that the seam plan is showing you uh, where the joins are going. And you'll notice also if I zoom in here, it's going to be labeling them by their, by their cut designations, as well as the room they come from. So some people don't like to have both, they just prefer to have the seam plan, and that's totally fine. We could turn room plan off. Now what you'll also notice that next to, next to each of these different pages you can include here, you have a settings icon next to it. So sometimes uh, what you'll find is that you'll be looking at this, but uh, what you'll notice is that maybe uh, maybe some dimensions will not be around the outside, uh, or maybe the like you'll see for example here that I have the square meter areas showing on these rooms. So there's lots of different aspects to these pages here uh, that may not be turned on for you just because of the way Measure is set up by default. So if you come into the settings icon for uh, for whatever page uh, you're interested in, so let's say the seam plan in this case, you come into that settings icon uh, and you're going to get a whole, a whole bunch of different options here. Uh, so just options of note that are, that are you know, common questions we get. So you can turn your dimensions on in here, um, often they're turned off by default. Uh, something else I'd like to point out in here, and, and this kind of applies to all the pages here, right at the top you have an everything or a selection only uh, radio button that you can turn on. So if, for example, you only wanted the kitchen, uh, the dining kind of entry kitchen area to show, if you highlighted that on your plan and then you came in here and said selection only uh, in, in the properties window, then it would be focusing just on that area. It would ignore everything else and at least in, based on the way I've got it set up, it would kind of zoom in on that area so that that was all you saw. Another option you have down here is to show the, the quantities in the legend or, or show a legend. So that's the section down here. It's quite useful as well, just to, you know, so that you can see that green is ceramic tile. That's not obvious if you were just looking at this, bit, um, at this page up here. I mean, it probably is for you because you've been working on the project, but for, for other people who look at it later on, um, this legend is definitely quite helpful. 
Uh, another thing you can do in here as well is you can have the graphics cropped automatically. So what we mean by that, if I turn that off, what you'll notice here is that it zooms out so that you can see uh, everything on the page. You can see the entire blueprint that I had imported. Now, if, if you need to see the whole uh, blueprint, then fair enough, turn it off. But most often, you'd rather be able to see the plan itself much more clearly than it is here, because you know we're zoomed out. So you'd come in here, and you just make sure that that was turned on. Basically, everything in this section is more or less identical for the room plan. Um, so, all right, now one other thing down at the bottom here, you'll see that my orientation, I have set that to be landscape. So this entire document here can have an orientation, and I'll go over how you set up that in a moment. Um, but with this orientation section at the bottom here, and, and once again, this is this will appear on all of the pages here. This is where you want just this one page to have a different orientation from the rest of it. It might be that the entire document suits portrait, but the plan itself, that would be better in landscape. So you can make an exception and say, I, I want this to be in landscape. So we'll, we'll hit that, and it should also crop my graphics again. There we go. Now coming down to the cut plan, uh, now this was changed recently, uh, maybe a couple months back in a measure update. A lot of you will probably remember that there used to be two cut plans. There was cut plan and then cut plan single page. They've been merged into the one. If you are still seeing cut plan single page as an option, then it means that uh, there is an update that you can do on your measure. And just um, kind of as a side point here, if you want to know how to update measure, um, or, or at least manually check that there is an update, then you can come down here into the help section. Uh, and you will have a check for updates button just up there. All right, so uh, the version you're looking for should be version 3559. That's the latest one. And that will mean that you have just this one cut plan option. Uh, so common questions we get about setting up the cut plan section. Uh, if we come in here to the settings icon, there's an option right down here called fit entire group to page. Sometimes that is turned on, and that can often be the culprit where you have Maybe this cut here for a. Sometimes it'll be filling the entire page, and then all of the all of the uh, all of the subsequent cuts they're filling their own page. Uh, obviously, that's going to be wasting a lot of paper. So if you turn that option off, uh, and we also recommend that down here in the column format section, change that to something like multiple columns. Uh, that's how you can get the two columns on the page like that. All right. Uh, Cut name sizes and the dimension sizes, they can be tweaked in here as well. If uh, if you're looking at these dimensions and maybe they're too big or too small, and, and it may change depending on, on how big or how small the roles are, uh, maybe you want to dial these numbers up or down. That's up to you. Uh, but it's good to point out where they are. All right. Now, the other page that I have turned on here is the worksheet. Now, it's debatable as to whether the worksheet is useful, uh, kind of depending on the use case. So the worksheet is kind of like a, a simplified version of the other worksheet that you'll have next to your layout button. Uh, we'll, we'll go in there in a moment. So basically it just gives you a line by line breakdown of everything in your project. Uh, currently I have mine just set up to show the products, but if we come in here to the settings icon, uh, we can have it right down here. We can say include the line items. That, it, that expands it out quite a bit more. It's gonna show you each room uh, that the products or, or each each product and what rooms it occupies. So if we come back down here again, we'll see that the 366 carpet, it goes in all of these rooms here. Now this is by default going to include the prices down the side. And sometimes that may not be what you want. You, you Maybe you're really just only interested in the, uh, in the actual quantities over here. So there's another section that we're gonna take a look at next that can help you out with that sort of thing. Uh, basically just different ways of expressing the information. So what you'll notice uh, along the top of your of this section up here, you'll have print, pre uh, print PDF, and then something called quote. All right. So that quote button, um, if we click on that, it's going to take us to another section called forms. Uh, not many of you have probably been into the form section, or maybe you have, and, and you just haven't really worried too much about what it's for. Basically, the best way to start with forms is to come up to file, and there are, there are usually several templates in here that you can use as a starting point. So if I pick on the quote template, for example, uh, this is how the quote template starts out. Basically, it's just headers and footers, uh, and then basically your products in the middle. Another template in here that you might be quite interested in would be the work order template. Uh, this structures things with a, with a box, or, or sorry, a, a table structure there gives you some options down the bottom for name and signature and such. 
uh, that would be more if you printed it out. So it's worth browsing through these templates here and, and just maybe, maybe there's one that suits uh, your use case as a starting point. Uh, but let's go back to the quote and I'll, I'll show you what else we can do uh, with this template. Uh, it doesn't have to just sit like this. Um, th this is quite plain over here. So the first thing I'll point out is that you can uh, choose how you organize the information here. So for example, uh, we could say I want it to be organized by product, uh, or perhaps you want it to be organized by room. And you'll see that when I change it to rooms, for example, it's giving me a list of all the different rooms and the products I have in each of those rooms. Uh, maybe that would be something that you'd have uh, accompany the documents you give to your layer. Moving over to this detail section here, uh, right at the top, you can change the scope of what it looks at. If you're working with a, a project that has um, multiple different sheets and phases, you can change exactly how much of those phases are included here in the form section. Now columns is quite interesting. When you come into columns, uh, basically all of those columns that you have available to you in the worksheet section, you can turn them on and off here. So depending on, I guess, the, the nature of of the document or, or who it's supposed to go to will determine which columns you turn on. If we turned on the color chip, that's quite a good one because that shows you its corresponding display color on the plan. And then maybe we could go through and turn on all of the quantity related columns and get rid of the price columns. Uh, that was something that we couldn't do on the worksheet that we had in the print menu. Uh, so let's leave it, oh, maybe we'll turn boxes on and extra waste. Right. So in the, in the portrait option, sometimes it will tell you that now you have too many columns. So what you may want to do, and, and the way I generally think it works the best, is if you come over here to orientation, uh, you can say, I would like it to be landscape, and that will let you fit more columns in. One other thing you may want to double check is in the page setting, uh, sorry, the page setup section, um, it sometimes it's letter depending on the template that you had picked. So you may want to come in here and say A4 and you'll get something a little bit more like that. So coming back to columns, uh, we should be able to turn on, uh, I, it's got that column turned on, fantastic. So we have more columns showing up here. So probably just browse through this section here and, and decide on which one best expresses the information you're after. Maybe you wanna, maybe you wanna see the products and then where they go, or maybe you wanna see it from a room standpoint. Uh, moving back to products, another great thing you can do in here is if we come over here to the add-on section, so all of these products I have here, there are some add-ons that are also being applied to those products. So I can say, I would like to see those add-ons under the material. Uh, and, and now that's starting to look a little bit more useful. And then further to that, you could come over here to rooms and say, I would like to see all the rooms that apply respectively. So, I mean, obviously the more things you turn on, uh, the longer the page is gonna get or the more complicated it's gonna get. But of course, that's why these are all options. You can turn all of them on and off uh, to match whatever situation you're looking for. And if you really want, you can show the prices over here as well. So let me just simplify this just a little bit to make it a little bit easier on the eyes there. Now I mentioned uh, headers and footers before. Uh, at the top I have a company name and then down the bottom here I have the date and then over here I have uh, the page number. These headers and footers can be adjusted and the changes we make to the headers and footers here that applies both to this form section and also to the file print section that we were looking at earlier. So the way you adjust these headers and footers, uh, over here on the side, you have the section uh, called formatting. Right at the top, you have a section called element. When you go in there, you're gonna get a preview of the document, uh, or not a preview of this document, but basically just a diagram of the bit of, of, the bit of paper. And you'll see that highlighted in yellow is, is this middle section here. So that's the current section that we're looking at. If we clicked on maybe this uh, portion over here in the top uh, left corner, uh, so, so that section is now the one we're focused on. And down here, this is where we tell it what we want to go into the header footer section. So this is where uh, it's probably worthwhile going over one more feature that I probably should have gone over right at the beginning, and that is the customer section. So we can access the customer section here in the form section, but if I come back out of forms and return to the original drawing screen, you also have the customer button right up here next to your import blueprint button. So in the customer section, uh, I already have filled out a customer here. Now, if you're, uh, if you're an RFMS customer, then you'd probably be interested to know that you can actually search for people from your RFMS database and drop it right in. Uh, otherwise, of course, you could just type it in. That's up to you. 
based on the information that we have supplied in here, when it comes back to uh, looking at the form section, so let me just get back there for you now. Okay, and let's go back to that other section over here. We have this little button right here um, that's called insert tag. So if I bring that up, I get lots of different parameters, all sorts of details about the project that I can drop into this section. So maybe we want to take, uh, where is it, customer name, and let's insert that. So what you'll see there is the customer name uh, has popped up in that corner. And then further to that, we could put a new line in, and we could add the customer address line in, uh, customer address one. And there we go. Uh, you can add your own plain text in here as well. It doesn't have to be just those tags, and, and that will show up over here as well. Because it works off tags, what this means is that you can set this section up in advance, structured however you like. You, you know, you have your customer details over here on the side. You want something else over on this side. You can set it all up so it, you know, it, it looks just how you like it. And then per project, based on whatever you have in that customer section, uh, whoever you've imported, whatever details you've edited, uh, entered into there, that will populate the right spots here in your headers and footers. And then, uh, then it all looks very professional um, with very little effort going forward. You can also change the font sizes here as well. You could highlight the customer name, and then right up here, you could say, I, I want that to be a little bit bigger. Maybe you want to up the font size slightly, and you'll see that now that's, that's appeared a little bit bigger. Uh, so you can modify this to look exactly how you like. Uh, you can even drop a logo in. So maybe you want to move over to this portion over here on the, uh, on the right, and, and you could drop a logo in if you have one on hand. Now, as I said before, this also applies to the, uh, to the file print section. So if we came back out of this form section and refreshed it back here, we should be seeing those same changes. There we go. So the customer name has now started popping up here as well. And that, that's really quite important, setting up those headers and footers. I, I think it's often underestimated because what this means is that when you've printed your project off and it's, it's gone anywhere, uh, if you have all those details up there, then it means it's going to be a little bit harder to get it mixed up. You you know, you pick up the bit of paper and you know exactly which project it pertains to. Uh, now, one more thing I want to go over quickly in that form section is once you've set it up exactly as you like, uh, we can then save that as a template. So if you come over here to file, uh, you can come down here and say, I'd like to save that as a template. So we'll do OK. And what this means uh, is that uh, going forward, you'll be able to pick your template from here. And it means you could have multiple different templates. You could set lots of them up to suit lots of different situations. And just pick on the right template, uh, and, and you will have that um, to just go straight ahead and print. You have a print button down there as well. Now, one other thing that is probably worth mentioning as well um, our, our, uh, our webinar today is dealing with, of course, the, um, what happens probably at the end of a measure project uh, when it comes time to actually print that information out. A bit of advice that we, would, uh, that we would like to give here is that prior to doing that, this worksheet section up here, uh, you don't always really feel you probably need to go in there, especially if it's just a carpet job. Uh, but I would, I would strongly, or, or we would very strongly recommend coming in here uh, I mean, it, it gives you a good overview of your project, so it is probably worth coming in here, but it's really important that you do, because what, what you probably can't see is that in the background, Measure runs a math check on your project. And by coming in here at least once every project, it's just, it's just giving Measure a chance to kind of scan the project, and if there was a problem with anything, it would present you with a, a little box telling you, okay, you need to go look at this product uh, on this sheet, that kind of thing. Uh, from this point here, you can click the print button down the bottom, which would take you straight to that file print section. Or if you click on the form section up here, uh, that would take you to the quote section that we were looking at before. So um, you can still get to all the places you need to from here. Um, but once again, I would very strongly recommend going here at least once every project. All right. That is, uh, that's really all the content we had to go over today. Um, if anyone has any questions on what we've gone over, then please shoot those through now. You should have a, a question section uh, on the side, uh, depending on how you're looking at the meeting. Should be a little question box or a little question mark. Uh, so please shoot those through and we'll endeavor to answer any we can. And if there are any we can't get to today, then we will follow them up.
uh, as best as we can after after the meeting or after the webinar. Just while those are coming through, just a couple of other things I, I might mention. Uh, here in the print section, uh, if you want to change the printer you're working with or the paper size you're working with, then right down here at the bottom, you have a, uh, a printer section. And if you come in here, you'll see that you can set the printer you're printing from and also the paper size. Uh, here is where you set the master uh, or, the, or the document wide orientation. So uh, back in that setting icon, you know, on, the, on any of these pages here, right down the bottom, I mentioned that this is where you can make an exception to the default. Uh, orientation. So if you had this page set to default, then it would be inheriting off uh, whatever this is set to. Now another question that comes up uh, reasonably frequently is uh, sometimes when people hit the PDF button up here because we don't want to physically print it, uh, we want to we want to just save it to a file. Uh, sometimes that doesn't appear to work. Just to give you uh, a little bit of insight there, when you hit that PDF button, Measure utilizes something called uh, a Microsoft XPS writer. Basically, that's a print driver that takes, uh, takes something you want to print, and instead of physically printing it, it turns it into a PDF. That does need to be installed for that PDF button to work. So if you are having trouble with that, then perhaps um, get in touch with your IT and see if they can look into that for you. Uh, kind of as a, as a Another way to get around that, if, if that is giving you a little bit of difficulties, in the printer section here, sometimes you can come in here and uh, there's another, like for example, I have Qt PDF Writer. So sometimes there's another PDF Writer that you can use from in here. And if you change the printer in here, then the print button up here will just use whatever you've selected there. All right. Uh, I haven't seen any questions come through, so I assume we've explained everything well enough. Okay, so someone has just asked actually if the print settings will save from project to project. Uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, all the changes you make in here, uh, you know, the pages you turn on, the settings you turn on in here, that applies from project to project and it does also apply retroactively. So if you open an old project, those same print settings will be saved, uh, unlike things like project settings uh, and products, which as you, most of you are probably aware, you have to hit that save as default button. So that is not necessary for any of these print settings. Uh, hold on, one more question has come through. Okay, no, that's one to follow up on. Uh, aside from that, uh, that, that is all the questions. That's, that's everything we had to show you guys today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us separately if you have anything further you wanted to discuss with us. Um, but aside from that, thank you very much for your time today and attending the webinar, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next week. Thanks. Bye.